that's the one. Hello and welcome to a gentleman who probably shouldn't need too much introduction to anybody who's in the financial field or indeed in British business. Uh, his name is uh, Reno Dono Saputro, but commonly known and affectionately known as Donny. Pat Donny, welcome to this interview with me. I'm Alistair Spears from Now Jakarta, Now Bali and MVB Sustainability. Um, we're, gonna, we're not going to talk much about Bali because that's uh, not really part of our discussion, but we will certainly be talking about sustainability and certainly about business in Jakarta. Um, I've been privileged to watch the, the very visible role of Britcham during the pandemic, which refused to lie down and go to sleep um, under the guidance of your predecessor and uh, Chris Ray, um, was a very proactive role. Are you going to continue the way which they did it uh, as laid down by your predecessor? Alistair, thank you. And thank you for having me in this session. It's an honor to be here. And by the way, you pronounced my name perfectly well. Uh, not many people can do that, not okay. even the local people can do that. Sorry, I should just, uh, I thought actually we should take it actually with a little bit actually a dose of, uh, you know, the fun. But uh, of course, but thanks for that. And, and to your question, perhaps if I may just paint uh, the picture, thank you for mentioning about Bridgem's activities. And, you know, we have been the, the most active foreign chamber in Indonesia in the last few years, and particularly during the pandemic. We got over 60 events every year. And I think Bridgem has done a fantastic job in supporting the business community on both sides, the British business community that we represent, as well as uh, the Indonesian business community through our, uh, well, a lot of our work together with our counterpart, Karim, Indonesia. We have also taken a part in the formulation and by providing inputs together with Karim to both governments, the UK, as well as Indonesia, during the jet code agreement and we're very pleased to see that it has been signed and the ministerial meeting level actually has been concluded um, that would pave the way for a an accelerated uh, trade and investments between the two countries in the future no doubt about it um, look since the beginning of the uh, pandemic i think we and bridgem have been collaborating with quite a number of our partners and stakeholders uh, and just mentioning a couple of things actually that we have done. Uh, we have been contributing to the war against the pandemic, the vaccination rollout. Our members have collected um, an over 1.5 billion rupiah to support Karin in its war um, on COVID uh, by driving vaccinations. We've worked with, together with the Singapore Chamber of Commerce to bring the oxygen tank during the early days of the pandemic uh, at no cost with one of our partner and one of our members. Um, and I think uh, more importantly, we have been helping to drive a lot of international focus, not just from the UK, but from other countries into how important Indonesia is as an investment destination and as a trading partner. Now, my chairmanship, I'm merely a steward of the organization taking over from Oli um, and the key tenets of uh, us, the executive officers of the bridge and going forward would be to first and foremost, to build upon what we have achieved so far. Number two, we will continue to foster and promote trade and investment relations between the two countries and we will be aligning even more closer with our key stakeholders. Most important part will be the UK, the Her Majesty's government, as well as the Indonesian government and the likes of Karim. But coming from a financial background rather than all these human resources background, will you be looking at things in a different way or because you're the chairman of Bridgem, you'll be following the, the Bridgem uh, uh, basic uh, modus operandi. Uh, uh, will you have a different perspective? Because you're a very senior financial guy. Um, I have been working as, uh, together with Ollie for the last two years as his vice chair. And to be perfectly honest, I don't think there's anything different between him and I. 
from that perspective, we're both senior executive of our companies. We understand the mission of BridgeSham and how we should work very closely together with all the stakeholders in order to provide uh, or create value, more value added for our members and in achieving the goals of promoting that trade investment between the two countries. So I don't think there will be any different. Well, I think you've just answered the next question straight away, <laughs> which is, the, do you think the role of Chambers of Commerce, um, should, what they, should it be? Do you represent the commercial interests of your members? Or are you more involved presenting the British, British business community to the Indonesian government? I mean, there are slightly different nuances to that, are there not? Who are you? Because you are a membership organization, you do represent your members, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. That's why, first and foremost, our goal would be to enhance the value that we create for our members, uh, ultimately. Uh, but the role of Bridgem goes way beyond that. And as I mentioned earlier, I mean, the other goals actually that we have is, is to help facilitate and promote further trade and investments between the two countries. And we do that role very seriously. But ultimately, at the end of the day, whatever happens you know, in the world, because at the moment we are at a rather interesting yet confusing sort of a world order with disruption in the global supply chain. Um, then we see the whole inflation sort of uh, spiking up, uh, the geopolitical tension obviously in Europe, I mean, you know, and as well as actually in South China. See, um, all of our members actually have long-term commitments to Indonesia. By the way, I mean, we got over 250 members uh, of which many of uh, our members have been operating in Indonesia for over a hundred years. So that long-term perspective is really there. So that, we don't believe that that will change at all. Um, and um, if you look at the way actually that we have been promoting um, various policy recommendations, advocacies and engagements with the local stakeholders, that really actually goes beyond uh, fulfilling a short-term commercial interest of members. I mean, that goes way beyond that. Many of our member companies are taking part in the current B20 under Indonesia's G20 leadership as either co-chairs or even chair and providing contributions, significant contributions to the development of policy recommendations that uh, would further promote actually those closer ties between the G20 countries, but particularly between Indonesia and the UK. That's um, wonderful to hear that. And I think that, that hopefully the, the momentum built by G20 will not be interrupted by that that uh, stressful situation in, in um, Ukraine, which has, as you said, disrupted so many other things, including the uh, supply chain management, which has been badly um, affected. And of course, the energy situation, and this is, this is something which um, the UK and your, your own body has been uh, recommending very strongly, this move into sustainability and renewable energy, uh, spearheaded by Ainsley Mann and his group, um, very, very a strong a level of activity and sustainability. Is that something you wish to build on? Is that an area of expertise that Britain can bring to Indonesia? And just in that, that moment, your experience in finance, is that going to help um, through the new carbon tax, carbon trading, all the things that very few of us understand, how, how people trade carbon which you can't see and give credit which you can't see it's very complicated but what is there a, a role there in the, for finance to help sustainability you mentioned about the work that's been done or spearheaded by Ainsley and I I really have to be could give credit to that um, Ainsley has really a broad bridge um, as the previous chair before Ole I think he had steered us uh, into an area where it has now become, uh, I think, one of the top leading global uh, topic on sustainability. Um, look, and the position of the, the two countries, the UK and Indonesia, sends the benefit given the, uh, in, in collaborating even further because of the, the specific nature of actually that the two countries actually complementary actually have. Now, we have 
four focus groups within BridChat, right? Actually, one of them is on sustainability that is chaired by AIMS. I think we've done quite a number of um, thought leadership, policy, uh, best practice sharing, policy advocacies with quite a number of stakeholders here. Um, and I'm, I'm really proud to say that I think actually we are the most active member when it comes to sustainability uh, area in, in Indonesia. Um, Indonesia has significant potential when it comes to nature-based solution. There's no doubt about it. It has superpower, natural capital potential. Uh, Indonesia is developing its carbon market very, very intensively. As you know, President Jokowi has just signed the presidential regulation on carbon economic value just before he flew to COP26. Now, the UK government has signed an agreement to help Indonesia combat climate change. Uh, President, the President Jokowi has signed that agreement with Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Um, the UK has also committed to support from a technical aspects uh, how Indonesia should develop its carbon markets. Uh, from my own personal perspective, I think we have, my organizations actually have been very much into the, 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 the sort of value chain of carbon trading and voluntary carbon markets. We believe that this would be one of the key future for Indonesia. Because if you talk about carbon credit, it is not about just forestry. The key to unlocking the successful mechanism in helping Indonesia achieve its net zero, particularly on the energy transition mechanism, i.e. by decommissioning early, the coal-fired power plants actually would rest towards carbon trading. That would be the key how to make it commercially viable. Now, with all of that potential, I think this particular area is something that we should really be putting a lot of energy and focus on. Uh, I am very happy that uh, our fellow board member, Jeff, Jeffrey Chatelier from Forest Carbon has taken over from ANC. Jeff is really actually the, 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 the number one subject matter expert in this particular space um, in the region, it's not just in Indonesia. So um, I think we got a great position to play uh, even more in this space. Uh, the two countries have naturally, uh, you know, uh, very compatible partners in promoting uh, carbon trading and carbon markets further. Indonesia as the producer and UK has the is a financial center, it's a global commodity exchange. Uh, side and also represents many of the buyers within the voluntary carbon markets. Sounds like a, a, a very good partnership, uh, but Johnny. Um, and now obviously that's going to continue, as you said, but are there new areas that you're thinking about that, that you've got your, your eye on? Things that, you know, we've, okay, we've got sustainability and carbon markets locked away, good team there. What's next? Is there new ideas your, your teams are coming up with? Well, I'm not sure about externally, actually, but internally, I mean, BridgeM as an organization, I think, and this is to address your earlier question. Um, we have two fantastic business units, actually, that we, you know, one is the, not business unit, but actually, you know, unit of operations. One is our education center. We've partnered with 15 universities in the UK. We are playing a bigger part in trying to not just promote uh, higher education to Indonesians, to the UK, but also how we can help uh, the Indonesian youth in grasping uh, better about the requirement of being a leader in a sustainable world. So for example, we just signed an agreement with Apexi. Apexi is the Indonesian Mayor's Association that, that represents 98 cities. Uh, 98 with 98 mayors over there. The chairman is Mayor Bima Arya Sugiato of Bogor uh, to support them in their uh, youth city changer program that focuses on building the right skills of leadership for the city's youth in the current sustainable world. Um, that's actually one of the things. So I also believe that we can expand our, business, uh, our education center in collaboration with the British Council to create further values that in turn um, 
you know, there is a commercial element actually within that because, for example, placements of uh, successful placements of any Indonesian students to the U partner universities that we have actually would also generate revenue that in turn, we're non-profit by the way, but in turn actually can be put in back actually to activities that would help or create more values to the members. The second organization unit I think that we have and we have retained that capability is our business center. Uh, the origin started from the OBN program with uh, the FID and the DIT now, whilst it's no longer there, the overseas business network grant, uh, but the, the capability that we have in supporting British companies who would want to invest or operate or doing its marketing activities in Indonesia remain there. I believe we can grow that further. We can be the right partner for any British companies who would want to operate um, and, 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 and do business in Indonesia and end to end from an advisory perspective to licensing all the way to their marketing activities in Indonesia. So that is really something that we believe um, the synergies actually between the units of Richem uh, can give us some uh, long hanging fruit benefits uh, in the short term. Uh, I think your, your emphasis on uh, youth and education is absolutely exemplary. That's what's needed more than anything in Indonesia to bring the next generation on through a very, very good education. And where better than Britain in, at so this point? Where better than university standards are, are very good and society standards are still compatible with Indonesia where other countries are not quite so compatible, shall we say, to not be too controversial. Um, but we've got a, we've got a, a bit of a problem with um, Europe, don't we? With Britain and Brexit, but you're still part of Eurocham. How does that work? How can you be part of Eurocham when you're not part of Europe? Well, as I understand it, um, constitutionally, Eurocham exists to support all countries uh, within the continent of Europe. So not just the political entity of European Union. And given this aspect of mission and that Bridgem is a founding member uh, with a permanent board representative, our relationship engagement and support of Eurochem remains uh, largely unaffected. That's, so, that's really you, for, very useful. Uh, for, one, day we'll, one day they'll call it though, and they'll say, guys, uh, you're not part of Europe. But at the moment, do continue. <laughs> but I think from the business side, um, you know, it would be the benefit of Eurocham as well as Bridgem. I mean, to uh, stay collaborative, right? Um, you know, I mean, it's 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 in this days and age, whether it's sustainability, digitization. Look at how these are creating ecosystems. All hands on deck, and collaboration is really the key in promoting further trade and welfare to societies. You know, and I think actually, you know, this exclusivity and um, you know. Uh, you know, it's no longer the, the name of the game these days. That's my personal view. I'm delighted to hear that. But even someone like myself in the, the sustainability uh, sphere as well, we find that instead of collaboration, there's still competition because people want to be the top dog in their field, unfortunately. But I'm delighted to hear that. There's always, you're right. You're absolutely right, Alistair. There's always nuances and uh, elements of that. Uh, permeating, right? Actually, but we know that uh, coming back to sustainability, and this is something that I'm really very passionate about in promoting. The only way that all nations and humanity can achieve Paris Agreement is by working closely together. The emerging markets requires trillions of dollars if we are to meet that targets by 2030. And there's no better way actually to, to, to achieve that than by collaborating together, whether you're in the government sector or public sector, the multilateral development banks, the global capital market funds, your asset management, hedge funds and others, along with the private sectors in each of the uh, emerging markets. Now, voluntary government market is another example where that intermediary instrument in the form of carbon credit has really helped. And I have a lot of faith, actually, that it will become even more dominant in the future in bridging that capital needs from the developed markets or the high income countries, as uh, the G20 calls it, actually, to the middle income countries where so on sustainability part, you know, where it's really needed the most in terms of funding. Um, 
well, let's hope that that collaboration all continues and does produce the results that we're looking for. Now, right at the beginning of our conversation, you mentioned obviously that the major changes are happening. We've got the end of COVID, we've got, we're in the middle or hopefully coming towards the end of a Ukrainian war, and we've got the AUKUS alliance and quite a lot of tension in the South China Sea. Will, I mean, Indonesia is a neutral country declaring themselves so quite strongly during this G20 presidency. And UK has pretty much come out on the side of US in the South China Sea, and certainly on the side of Europe in the Ukrainian war. Um, are, is there any difficulties going to arise because of that? In, from business point of view, um, you're not in politics, you're just in, in business. But going to be any problems there? If you look at it in terms of, you know, whether the geopolitical issues have affected the business, yes. I mean, that, that's no doubt about it. I mean, you can see that, right? The commodity prices super cycle that's happening now partly was contributed because of the war in Ukraine um, uh, between Ukraine and Russia. But, uh, uh, you, you know, it's, it's always been part and parcel of how we do business. Again, I would stress and underline uh, that the members that we represent actually have uh, got long-term views about the relationship, particularly with Indonesia. Uh, we've been, you know, many of us have been here for over a hundred years. Uh, it's very long-term perspective. Um, but then actually on a more sort of pragmatic level, I, we do not foresee that the geopolitical issues will affect relationships specifically on the economic and trade sector between the UK and Indonesia. Good, that's exactly what we want to hear. Um, now, I know it's, a, it's, an, uh, it's an organization which is um, based on membership and board, but do you have any personal ideas that you really want to see happening during your chairmanship? You got anything which you've got to say, look, I love this. Um, I want to see this happening. Um, everybody has got their personal interests. I mean, but do you have any? I don't think I should have any particular personal interest that I have actually in this. I've been part of Bridge and Board for the last three years. And uh, for me, I'm merely the, the steward of this organization until I pass it on to the next steward. But the strength is of the organization is the collective nature. Um, and I'm really very proud to see that. I think within the board, you can see the, the varieties of representations across almost all sectors you can think of. You know, that really represents actually the strength of British investments and, you know, companies' operations in Indonesia. Um, uh, what I would like to see is that that we uh, can work more effectively as an organization in promoting uh, uh, the, the trade and investment between the two countries, in getting value for our members, and that while we are doing it, we have grown more closer. You know, um, we could grow more closer and and I think actually, you know, it's, it's really fun to be part of the board. I must say we have no politics actually involved. Some of our organization or member organization within the board by nature in the market are competing. But, you know, within the board of Bridge and we're all collaborating. That's excellent. I have a, I have an area which I proposed to Bridge and many years ago. Sure, so I, still don't think, I still don't think has been been fulfilled and it's a huge area of, of expertise in Britain, which is tourism. Um, it's a, I mean, we are one of the, Britain is one of the, the great tourist destinations of the world and we haven't got anything really happening in one at the other side of the world, which is a, a major and closely allied to that, an area which we are absolutely world leaders in Britain is culture the whole museum management and the, all of the, the events management and the theater, which again, we have done nothing with. It is a business. It is not, it is a Britcham area. Um, it's not something which is uh, government to government. It, the, all of that is now a, a manageable business, but nothing's been done yet. I, well, I suppose it's something actually that uh, it's an interesting idea. We certainly, help promote awareness about the UK from a cultural perspective, 
from a destination, holiday destination perspective, right? Uh, I know many of our board members actually have been keenly advocating on that. Um, uh, as an example, and personally, actually, I'm, you know, I'm planning a trip actually with my ex high school friends and, you know, sort of overseas. Uh, you know, this is one of those reminiscing sort of uh, trips and so on, actually. But, uh, you know, I suggested the UK and, you know, that's where we're going to be going in, in, in early uh, next year. But I think the interest, uh, the, the, the significantly increasing interest on the English Premiership League actually has, has also helped. By the way, during the Bicham Gala dinner, annual dinner that we, I think we went there as well. Um, uh, Hugh uh, Buffett, our country director for the British Council, mentioned that the number of students uh, from Indonesia going to the UK is increasing, um, you know, in, in, in a double digit sort of growth year on year. But there's one particular city that seems to be like spiking up in terms of interest of Indonesian students going there, and that's Liverpool. <laughs> well, one may wonder why. One, Liverpool or Manchester, perhaps. Yeah. Or Manchester. But in this case, <laughs> he mentioned Liverpool at least for last year, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> again, uh, you, I can't agree more with you. Um, and I'll take that on board. I think, uh, you know, Bridgham should also be working with, um, um, you know, the tourism authorities, uh, you know, of the UK and helping to promote. Uh, Good. Donnie, uh, that's the end of my questions for you today. You have, uh, as, as expected, given us clear, precise, and well-measured um, uh, answers. And we wish you the very best of luck in your chairmanship, as you say, the stewardship of BitCham during your tenure as chairman. Um, on behalf of now Jakarta, now Bali, and NVB, I'd like to say thank you to the new chairman of um, Brit British Chamber of Commerce in Indonesia, uh, Reno Dono Saputra. Thank you very much, Pat Donnie. Thank you for having me, Alistair. It's been a great pleasure. Likewise. Okay.